recently I had a conversation with um, someone in the industry that I was a part of, which is the music industry, the creative entrepreneurship space. And the conversation with him prompted me to make this video. Um, so there were some things that he was saying that kind of just stood out to me and really was that he was kind of over the capitalist model of society and how it's challenging and he kind of was looking for an alternative from capitalism. I just kind of wanted to talk about why capitalism uh, presents so many challenges, um, but I also wanted to present solutions and kind of educate a little bit. So um, the reason capitalism is presents its challenges, one of his arguments was that um, he was over it because the prices of everything goes up and as a result of that you end up having to grind harder and it's not sustainable because it's one hustle after the other one hustle after the other which made me think of okay maybe he's probably doing multiple things because if he's one hustle after the other then he's doing multiple things um it after a while that gets tiring right i think everyone would agree with that um so the problem he also mentioned was um, it, it's a lot of saturation. The problem with saturation and that everything um, is easier to access now because of technology and um, society and, and how everything works and everything um, industry is changing because of AI and technology. Um, and it's a constant uphill battle is what he was saying. And he didn't want to do things for money anymore, but he wanted to do things for purpose, which usually when I hear that, it's kind of makes me cringe a little bit. Um, and no diss to him, I think everyone wants purpose, right? Um, but let's jump into a little bit of some of the points. Um, I wanted to provide solutions and and just a different perspective. And I think one of the um, one of the reasons capitalism is so challenging is because it requires you to have a level of education and literacy that most people don't have. And when I say things like that, people usually end up saying, well, they went to school or they probably read a few books and um, or some people might even get offended. Um, but the reality is that most people in America haven't been taught financial education or financial literacy, and they don't understand how money actually works or even how business works. Why? Because where do we go learn about these things? If I were to ask you, where do people go learn about money? Where do people learn about how to start a business? There is no place, you know? Um, yeah, maybe you go to your banker, but your banker's not breaking down how money and, and finances actually work, how how to start a business, how to scale that business, um, who's your market, who's your audience, who you're selling to, right? All these things have to be answered. So if I ask you guys, where do people learn about these things? There's not that many places, right? And usually these are where like high ticket sales, uh, entrepreneurship gurus come in because they charge a lot of money to teach you how to scale a business, how to, how to grow a business, how to grow your sales, right? Aside from that, if you don't pay for that, you're not getting any training, right? But um, one thing that uh, I really want to get get at is the financial education. What that individual was talking to me about is pretty much uh, inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is that the prices of everything goes up, but our pay doesn't go up, right? And this is something we've always had to deal with in, uh, in America, in this country, is... Uh, that the prices of everything goes up. Why? Because money's printed. And every time money's printed, that kind of creates more debt, which then produces us uh, for taxes to go up. And we're constantly in this vicious cycle of having to uh, uh, pay for, for debt. I mean, having to pay for inflation, right? And the problem is the prices of everything goes up, but our income doesn't go up. So you got people going to school, getting a job the traditional way, getting into debt, um, getting a 401k, buying the house, buying the car, all on debt. And then next thing you know, the interest rates come, they start killing people. The prices the, the, the prices of the debt goes up and you're in this cycle trying to figure this out. Um, and the problem right there is that you don't have financial education. Now, if you're leveraging debt for to produce more money, great, right? That's kind of what Robert Kiyosaki talks about in his book, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that the rich, don't, the rich don't work for money, but they make money work for them. And one of the things that the wealthy do, which is financial education, is that they invest and buy things that produce more money or go up in value, right? So the rich don't work for money, they make money work for them. They're either making money on work for them or they're actually starting a business that produces an income. And this kind of leads me to the cash flow quadrant, which is also uh, discussed somewhat in the book of uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which he talks about there's four ways to make money. There's employee, self-employed, uh, business and an investor. 
Um, most people who are on the left side of the quadrant, which are employee and self-employed, you're getting screwed the most. Why? Because you're getting a, a, either a salary, you're getting paid an hourly rate. And regardless of what happens in the economy, if the economy goes up, it doesn't matter if, if the prices of everything goes up, you're still going to get paid that. Now, what a lot of people do is that they're like, well, I'm going to become my own boss. And this is like discussed in the book, The E-Myth, where it's like people um, kind of get this entrepreneurial seizure where they're like, I'm going to start a business because I think I can do it better than my boss. And that's actually not how business works, right? That might play a factor in it, but that's not necessarily how business works. So people do they go become a self-employed or a solopreneur, right? Where it's just you um, doing gigs. Like that's kind of what I used to do. And um, I'm happy because um, I'm, I don't have a boss, and which is part of the problem. I don't have a boss, so I kind of just handle my schedule on my own and kind of just take gigs as they come. I make a little bit more money than, uh, uh, than working a job. Or I might make the same amount of money, money as working a job. And the problem there is that you're going to get taxed. So employee and self-employee, they pay the most taxes, right? And when you're a solopreneur, also one of the challenges that I see and I experience as an entrepreneur or a solopreneur is that um, you don't actually have mentorship and you you are in charge of everything. You really don't have a business. What you have is that you own a job. And there's a difference between owning a business and, and owning a job. Solopreneurs, they own a job. That's not really, if the, if the business stops, if, if you stop working, the business stops making money. That's a problem. And you don't have a business. When you have a business, whether you're there or not, it's going to generate money, right? That's when you have a business. So that leads us to the right side of the quadrant, which is business and investor. If you have a business, you scale the business, whether you're there or not, the business is going to generate money. Now, it takes time to actually do that. It's very challenging. And that's kind of what uh, this individual is telling me about, the challenges of that. It's, it's very hard. It's like an uphill battle, he was saying. And again, it comes back to why it's so challenging is because we don't have financial literacy. That's one of them. Um, another one, we lack mentorship, like I was just saying a little while ago, right? Um, sometimes we think we can do it all and we don't have. Um, there's a formula. There's a formula to how business works. There's a formula to, to how to scale and grow a business. And those years are challenging, right? And being an entrepreneur and, and a business owner, is, it's a whole nother level of, of, um, of growth that requires you to actually be in that business. So um, like, for example, one of the challenges I, I experienced that um, when I was an entrepreneur, I had my business and I was trying to scale it is that I didn't understand like sales and marketing, right? Um, what I would do is that I would, I would focus on doing everything and I didn't have like a sales team that can make calls and I didn't train people how to make calls to, to get into sales. I didn't have the proper marketing and the proper v, uh, vehicles. Um, I didn't leverage the proper vehicles like um, social media and technology um, to actually make my business grow into market and let people know what I'm doing out there. Right. If you have good marketing, good sales, you'll have income coming in because that's what business is, is money coming in and flowing a certain way. Right. Um, and then eventually that money that's coming in is taking care of the most of the most of the expenses of the business. But the goal is to scale the business and grow it to the point that it can take care of the expenses and the overheads of the business, but then overflow and then actually produce cash flow, which is all right. It's taking care of all the business expenses and then I'm able to take a salary from there. And that's usually where people get stuck. They're not able to break that threshold or get past that point of just, OK, money's coming in, but it's, it's, it needs to take care of. Um, it's only be able to take care of, of the, the overhead and the expenses. The challenge is getting past that point. And in order to get past that point, you really have to be good at sales and marketing and understand both of those. And you don't have to do this stuff yourself. If you're a real boss, you'll train and develop people to do that for you and hire people to do that for you. Right. And then you start actually having people fulfill and deliver. Once once the once the money's coming in, you'll need to fulfill and deliver the service to the product that you're doing. And that's another challenge that sometimes people have the product that they that they have it's either it takes a lot of time to make it um and that's the one of the the problems i faced when i was in the music industry i had to produce and i would get overwhelmed producing and i'm you know i rather than hiring people or other producers and engineers to do it i i did everything myself eventually you're gonna burn out that's why having a business is so important you're able to hire other people pay them a salary which is a good thing you're making the economy go around you're making um, you're helping society flourish by doing that. And then I'm helping myself in that I don't have to focus on all these things. Right. So part of the part of the thing that we start realizing with 
entrepreneurship when you're hiring people and you're delegating and you have to have systems and processes in place and that requires a level of leadership right and that's one of the challenges with businesses uh, or starting a business that or being an entrepreneur is that there's a level of identity and growth that require is required from you um, and constant growth and constant development that's required from you. And most people don't get to that point for whatever reason. Maybe they got bad habits, um, laziness, um, you know, overweight, being overweight can lead to laziness, things we eat. There's so many things. And I, that's why sometimes people joke and I see these memes on social media of like, what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? Well, you wake up at five in the morning before the sun is up and you read this and this guy was clowning uh someone on tiktok was clowning like like these entrepreneur gurus that kind of make these like uh, over the top like um routines for entrepreneurs and that was funny part of the reason why entrepreneurs do that sometimes is because um again is a as a you're, you're getting into war you're getting into battle and if you're not prepared to go into battle what's going to happen you're going to get crushed right so entrepreneurship requires a level of leadership and development um, that the ordinary employee doesn't have to necessarily focus or think about. Why? Because they just got to show up nine to five, get paid. They don't have to worry about tax. Taxes get out of, uh, get taken out of their check. And then they just repeat that and they do that for 30 years, which if you ask me, that's also challenging. Why? Because most people aren't happy doing that, right? Which is a whole nother conversation. But being an entrepreneur, what does it require? It requires you to get up early, be there before everyone. Sometimes probably means you have to stay um, longer hours than everyone. Why? Because you're scaling and building a business and you have to be present. And especially in the first couple of years, um, it gets really challenging um, because you have to be present for everything. And that's very tiring. That's very dreading. That's very um, consuming uh, for, for some people to handle. Um, and again, just going back to that leadership requires leadership and growth. Um, so I just wanted to present some of these things. One of the things that this individual um, also said is that, um, well, his concern felt that he, capitalism is a constant uphill battle because of technology and AI. Well, every listen, every every industry, um, every so often of years, every decade, every every fifty hundred years, industries change. First it was agricultural, then it was industrial. Now we're in the technology. Now we're in AI. So are you saying that other businesses weren't able to make money because uh, 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 industries change? Agriculture to, uh, agriculture to industrial, people made money, businesses made money. So one of the things is that we approach business sometimes from a perspective of passion rather than uh, from a perspective of does this make sense? Does it actually produce money, right? One of the things that I always encourage people to understand is uh, there's a B to B, B to B and B to C business to business. Who are your clients? Is it, are you selling to businesses? Or are you selling to consumers, musicians? I want to speak specifically to musicians. If you are in the music industry and the way you make money is by actually doing gigs while well, you're in the industry and your market is uh, B to B you're selling to businesses. If you're, and I know a lot of people are like, well, I play at a church. That's not really big. Well, churches are a business, right? You're selling to a business. You're selling your services to a business. Whereas I'm in the financial services industry now, right? I'm selling to who? To consumers. So you need to understand what is your industry? Oh, who, uh, sorry, not what is your industry? What? Yeah, what is your industry? But who are your clients? Are is it businesses, or are they consumers? Right? Healthcare uh, actually actually um, is able to sell to both because uh, if you're in healthcare, you're actually selling to some businesses. But then you're also selling to consumers. So who is your client? You need to understand that. Are you selling to businesses or are you selling to consumers? Um, that's another thing I wanted to point out that the individual was saying. He was saying it's kind of hard because um, industry is changing and now AI is taking over everything. Well, if you're smart and if you have the proper education, you can leverage that technology. You can automate things. I don't necessarily see that as something that is going to hinder my business. I'm going to see that as something as well, that actually creates more time and flexibility for me because rather than hiring someone, I can actually pay a subscription for this technology or AI company that can actually automate everything for me, right? So a lot of this is also perspective. A lot of people have this lingo or this language of like, it's just oversaturated. Well, have you looked at the data? Have you looked, have you done some research? Have you actually spoken to other people in that industry? And that's another thing sometimes we lack um, when we're looking to start a business is that we're thinking of things from a perspective of 
uh, of what we think rather than the actual facts and data. So I wanted to drop this video and just encourage people who are starting businesses. Um, it is an uphill battle. It is uh, very challenging. Uh, entrepreneurship creates a lot of things. But what I want to present you with, are you growing in your identity? Are you growing in your leadership? And who is influencing you? And what are you reading? And, and who is mentoring you along your, your entrepreneur entrepreneurial um, journey? You need those things. Books you read, people you're around, the environment is important. Who's mentoring you? And constantly growing as a leader. You're, you're not able to work with this. You're not going to have success if you're approaching your business as an employee. Now you're a business owner. You have to have a new level of identity and a new character in order to actually have success in that business.